So question for you this morning, what determines the difference between hot and cold? What determines the difference between hot and cold? Is there an absolute temperature that changes from one to the other? If you think about a thermometer, where on there is hot and where is cold? It's kind of a polarity, isn't it? It's kind of a scale. It's kind of a personal preference, right? I'm always fascinated in the winter when I switch my heat pump from air conditioning to heat and I have to change the temperature. It's like, well, wait a minute, if 77 or 8 was comfortable for my AC, why is that temperature too hot for my heat? It's kind of one of those things. Makes you wonder. But a lot of it's based on our preference, our, our own comfort, right? And our preference on, on how we feel. I mean, right now, is the room warm? Is the room hot? Is the room cold? Are we chilly? Are we, is it neutral? You don't even notice it. Temperature, temperature, it's on a polarity. Finding the difference between hot and cold is truly about our perception. It's truly about our perception. If you think about <clears throat> temperature and you think about water, water is a wonderful metaphor to use, and you take a pot of water and you divide it in half. One half you put in a pot on the stove and you turn the heat up. The other you put in the freezer. What happens? They begin to transmute, transform themselves, don't they? they the, the water begins to boil on the stove. The vibration's higher. It's moving about. And then steam starts happening. It changes its form. Meanwhile, the water that's in the freezer becomes ice, right? The nature of the substance is the same, though, isn't it? It's still water. It's just taken different forms. Well, that's basically the law of polarity. It is the same, but it's just different on the spectrum of what's happening with it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. My talk is Love, Fear, and the Law of Polarity. Now, the reading that Reverend Lee did for us this morning is from our book of the month, Neil Donald Walsh, and it's God speaking about polarity and speaking about the two emotions. There's only two emotions. And he said those were love and fear. Love and fear. As I've played with this idea this week and paid attention to my own decisions and discussions and conversations and such, I've realized the truth in the statement that most all, frankly, of my actions were coming from either love or fear in some form or fashion. Derivatives, I believe he said, that there are, you know, it's either love or fear, some derivative of one of those. And I can look back through my conversations and so forth this week and find that that was the case, that that was the case. So I want to invite you to take a moment for yourself right now and think about your week and maybe some of your interactions. Did you respond with fear or from fear or from love? Now, how might we know the difference? If I'm responding from love, I'm responding in a very open and generous and kind way. If I'm responding from fear, I might think there's not enough and I better get mine first. I better win this conversation, right? What else might I think? There's not a, there's just, there's just over here. I, can't, I can't share that information. I can't do that. There are different ways that we might respond in our fear. Props. And it's important to ask ourselves that question as we begin to discern, is it love or fear? The ancient Hermetic teaching, this is way back in the BC time in Egypt, they talk about the law of polarity, and it says that everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature. 
steam and ice, but different in degree extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Now, the first time I read that, that was a lot of mind-bending information. But as I begin to absorb this idea of the law of polarity, I begin to recognize the truth in this, particularly when you think about steam and ice as one example. I'm going to give you some more examples this morning. But I want to think of a yardstick, such as this one. And if we think of, let's do it the right way, we think of illness and we think of wellness. They're polar opposites of each other, right? So in the law of polarity, they would sit on each end of this if we assume this is the law of polarity. So where does illness begin or end and wellness start? Do I have to get all the way over here? And where does wellness begin to end and become illness? As I think about that, there are people that I know or know of who have incredible illnesses within their bodies. A great example is Stephen Hawking. His body was not cooperating with his mind, but his mind was brilliant, a brilliant physicist. Would you say he lived a full life? Would you say he had joy? Yeah. And he shared his gifts with the world. I know people who've had a hangnail and think the world is ending. <laughs> Where on our scale is wellness and illness? There's some perspective in there, isn't there? I get to decide how I define my illness or my wellness, my poverty or my prosperity, my love or my hate, my fear or my courage, right? In the law of polarity, they're opposites, but they are on this continuum. And where the definition of those temperatures of warm and cool become up to us as individuals, yes? All right. Ron and I had a great example of this law of polar polarity this week. I was telling you about the tickets that I got. It was to the show um, Private Lives. We went to the Don Bluth Theater. It's a local live theater here in Scottsdale. If you've not been, it's delightful. They've moved to a new location. It's really, really cute. But if you're not familiar with the show, it's an old story. And it's about a divorced couple who's been divorced for five years. And it was a very volatile, volatile marriage. So they are now, five years later, remarried on their honeymoons in the same town, in the same hotel, sharing a balcony. Well, when they discover this, sparks fly because they were really filled with a lot of animosity towards each other and the divorce. And they start in with the sparks. And then the next thing you know, those sparks turn into a little flame of passion. And they decide to drop their current new, brand new spouses and run away and become a couple again. So we've seen them go from tearing each other apart, hate, to love. But then we start to see those sparks again, and we start to see them move back into hate. So across this two-hour show, we see this law of polarity between love and hate exemplified in this couple on the stage. It was fascinating. It was just fascinating to watch. Sometimes love changes, doesn't it? Sometimes love changes. Have you ever been in a relationship that moved from love to something else? You know, whether it went all the way to hate or maybe went to dislike or maybe went to just like or maybe it went to none of the above. Just don't care, right? Some of us have had relationships with addictions. Didn't care much for that first smoke, first beverage, first bite of food of special taste, maybe. And then you did. That happened to my brother. 
as a child, he loved apple butter, and my grandparents were making apple butter one fall, and um, he was getting bites out of the kettle, and bites out of the kettle, and bites out of the kettle, and bites out of the kettle, until he had so many bites he got sick. To this day, he can't stand apple butter. But he loved it. The scale for him on apple butter is, it's a negative now, right? Ugh, it's gone too far. And sometimes that happens with us, with our things we can become addicted to. In the beginning, it may not have tasted very good, but then we developed a taste for it and a habit for it. And now it's a problem, or then it was a problem, and we've let go of that. So it's this love-hate thing going on again. The law of polarity also works in the mental plane. And that's really what we want to talk about today, right? In some religious science is the mental plane and how we, how we experience this. How many are familiar with our affirmative prayer treatment? Yeah, affirmative prayer. That's our form of prayer that we use here, that five-step process. It uses the law of polarity. Did you realize that? It uses the law of polarity. When a practitioner prays with you, they usually ask you, what would you like prayer for, right? That lets us know where you are, what's going on in your life, and what would you like prayer for. It tells us where you are on the scale of polarity. What's the condition? And then what you would like prayer for tells us where you want to go on that scale of polarity. Are you going to complete wellness? Or are you going to something in between? That's why we ask. Because remember, we, what we receive in our prayer is what we're ready to receive in our prayer. And we can't know that. Only you know that, right? Yeah, only you know that. I've shared before how surprised I am when I've worked with someone in a session and they are describing perhaps an illness. And I ask, what would you like prayer for? And it's something less than wellness that they're asking for. I'm surprised by that. But that's why I ask. Because in their realm at that moment, they can't accept wellness, right? They can't accept that. We remind, we're reminded in our teaching that we focus on what it is that we want to experience in our life, turning away from that which we don't. It's not that we ignore conditions and deny conditions. We recognize them. It's like Lee said this morning that looking a fact in the face. Yes, we look them in the face, but we know we can turn away from them and no longer give them energy and focus on what it is we want to attract and call into our life. That's our teaching. But that's only one piece of it. There's a couple of more I want to share with you today. A couple more keys to successful manifestation. Ooh. So it's definitely important that we stay out of focusing on not what's, what's not working, right? We don't want to focus on what's not working because it just gives us more of what's not working. So we want to let that go. The other two keys are to let go of wanting. To let go of wanting. But I want it. But I want it. And when we're wanting it, what are we saying to the universe? I don't have it. It's not here. And that wanting in energy is really lack energy. And that's what we're putting out and that's what we're calling in. So we have to let go of that idea of wanting. What do we do? We transform that to gratitude. And you've heard the expression gratitude in advance. That's what it means. Let go of the wanting and have gratitude in advance for that which you believe is coming to you through the power of your word. Make sense? The third thing is to understand this law of polarity. Understand how it works in the law of attraction and in calling in our good. Also understanding where you are on it. Where you are on it. When we are in our prayer, if we're calling in some form of amazing opulence, I love that word, opulence, and we're not ready to receive that yet, we've got to disconnect. So we have to figure out 
<coughs> excuse me, where we are, what our definition of wealth, love, health, career, whatever is. We have to know where we are in consciousness so that we can match that and begin to expand that. Let's go back to our yardstick. If I'm manifesting wealth, so I've got prosperity and I've got poverty, where am I on the scale today? Well, I'm broke. I'm broke. I got nothing. It's like, mm, probably not. It's probably more than that. I bet you have a roof over your head. So we're not broke. So let's move our scale up a little bit, right? Just a few inches. Maybe we're financially challenged. Eh, I don't like the word challenged. I'm experiencing a temporary financial shortfall. Oh, that's better. And then we begin to find our gratitude and focus on our gratitude and gradually moving on this law of polarity, on this realm, up into our, our, our prosperity. We begin to move. But we've got to expand our consciousness. We talk about that. I think Joe talked about that last week, about these limiting beliefs that we have. Use that great example of the iceberg. Great example of that conscious mind, subconscious mind. And how much of that 95% of stuff down there can be those limiting beliefs that we're unaware of. So when we're talking about health and healing, as I said, I've had sessions with folks who, who have a, an illness and it's like, okay, what is the treatment for? Successful treatment from the doctor, successful surgery, successful outcome. All right, I can pray for that. But why not spontaneous healing? Why not spontaneous healing? Science of Mind teaches us that we must be prepared to receive that which we pray for. And frankly, there's too much evidence against spontaneous healing, isn't there? way too much evidence against it. Studies reveal, I don't know, 3% of everybody that gets a certain disease can spontaneously heal it. I'm not poo-pooing medicine or treatments or surgery or anything like that. I'm just saying we need to be aware of where we are on that continuum in our consciousness on the polarity of wellness and illness. Where are we on the scale? What can we accept? So that's the only example I'm trying to give us here with that this morning. And this works the same way. This idea works the same way in, with any condition. And so if we're going to become masters of the law of polarity and apply it to every facet of our life, we first need to unwind those pesky little unlimited, those limiting beliefs that we might have. And Joe gave you several ways to <coughs> practice that last week. When we understand that the law of when we understand the law of polarity and there's a positive to every negative, think of a negative in your life right now. Think of a negative in your life. Think of the polar opposite of that, the absolute polar opposite of that. And then where are you on that scale? Is the condition so horrible that it's all the way in the negative, or is it somewhere in between? And what's it going to take to move that condition into the affirmative, into the positive in this law of polarity? Law of polarity will support us as we take those steps of moving our consciousness towards the positive. That's why science of mind tells us to live in the affirmative. It's utilizing the law of polarity. Anybody been stuck in a rut? rut of negative thinking and it just seems the more i think about it the worse it gets the bigger it gets i can't sleep i wake up in the mornings and it's right there again it's hard to see what's a new perspective when you're looking over the edge of a rut everything looks pretty flat in front of you doesn't it looks pretty flat in front of us <coughs> 
So if we find that we're feeling lonely or unhappy with maybe a career or maybe feeling a little broke, we can get stuck in those feelings thinking that this is the, this is it. This is as good as, what's that movie? It's as good as it gets. This is it. Well, it's not. It's not. We can change our thoughts. We can change our thinking. We can set up a new polarity in our minds. We have that ability. Did you know how powerful you are? You have that ability. So get yourself a yardstick. I'll get mine. <laughs> Keeps falling. We'll leave it up here. Get yourself a yardstick and um, start using it to change that feeling. Just like I gave you that example. You know, where am I? Put it on your wall. Use it like a vision board. Here's my condition. I really think it's down here. I really do. It's, it's serious. What do I want? Uh, I can't accept this yet in my mind. I just don't feel it. I don't believe it. I'd like to get there. But I think I can accept this. Put it on here. And then every day start visualizing and using that powerful imagination you have to inch yourself along moving up that scale of polarity. And what you will notice, I bet, is that this begins to move. Ah, I can accept a little more. My consciousness is expanding. I can accept a little more and a little more. And the next thing you know, you're way over here. Because you've changed your consciousness. You've moved by utilizing the law of polarity into higher vibration of the positive realm that you're now accepting, that you're now accepting. So we change our thoughts, our words, our actions, and we begin to come from love instead of from fear. That's what we're talking about, remember? There's two emotions. And as we begin to change our thinking, our actions, and our beliefs, we can begin now to respond to life from a place of love rather than fear. And that's much easier when we can accept our oneness, isn't it? When we can come from love and realize that we are one with each other and we are one with spirit. Because from that place of one, there's nothing to be afraid of, is there? Because it's only love. And this is what our prosperity quote was about this week. If you get the newsletter, if you don't, sign up in the lobby or online. But uh, if you get the newsletter, the prosperity quote in there is from Ernest Holmes. And he says, when our inner thought is in tune with the infinite, everything we do shall prosper. When our inner thought is in tune, in alignment with the infinite, everything we do will prosper. And this is how we learn to master using this law of prosperity. God is love, right? God is love. And when we align with God as one, that which is love itself, with all of our thoughts, words, and our actions, we're then automatically prospered. Automatically prospered. Alignment with life and with the flow. And that alignment becomes permanent for us, which consistent, permanent, right? Those are good things for us. It becomes permanent when we begin to see life through the eyes of love rather than through the eyes of fear. Now, each week we leave you with something called practicing the principles. And that is where you get take-home material to practice and use the science of mind in your life each day during the week, in your business, in your family, in your personal life. Because we're a teaching order. We teach spiritual principles and practices. So we also have a thing called Monday, Mindful Monday. That's a little newsletter I send out on Monday mornings. That's a recap of the talk, the quotes, and also these um, practicing the principles in detail. So if you'd like to receive that, you can sign up online. You can sign up with the QR code or in the lobby. 
So let's take a look at this week's practices. First one is love or fear. Love or fear. It truly is a choice. It's a mindful choice, but it's a choice. And this week, when you're facing a decision, I'm going to invite you to pause and ask yourself, is this response coming up from love or is it coming up from fear? Is it coming from love? Is it coming from fear? Am I feeling loving or am I feeling fear and afraid? Love is expansive and generous and kind and considerate. Fear is retractive. It's pulling back. It is including the negative aspects of ego, competition, anger. Those could be fear-based responses. So pay attention to those and check in with yourself. And then decide where you are on the spectrum of love and fear. Decide where you are in the law of polarity. Pause and choose to focus on love and fo focus on the positive because we can raise our vibration. We can raise our energy. We can choose love. Number two is diametrically opposed. Diametrically opposed by degrees, right? We may have the opposite ends of the stick, but it's all these little marks on here, these little, what are those, quarter, quarter of an inch marks, right? That's all it is, little baby steps, little baby steps. The difference between things that seem diametrically opposed, black and white, good and evil, it's degrees of vibration, like we talked about the steam and the ice in the beginning. It's just degrees, it's just degrees of vibration. When we think about spirit and matter, spirit and matter, and we talk about manifestation, that everything comes from invisible to visible, right? So if we think about spirit and matter and understanding that God is all, is the source of all, and vibrates at such a high vibration that it seems to be standing still because it's so fast, we can't even perceive it, it's infinite, but that has to slow down to come into form, into solid matter. So it's slower vibration. So again, it's this pole, right? The polarity. We do this by our baby steps, those little quarter inch steps like I'm showing on the yardstick. We do it in baby steps. Think and focus on one degree away, one degree away. What one thing can I do that'll move me over just a little bit closer to my choice versus where I am. And this is for us. This is not about, well, if they would do that, then it would be okay for me, right? It's not about that. This is truly the inner work for us. What can I do to change my perspective in the realm of consciousness to accept my good, as Lee was saying in the meditation this morning? What is my good? And what can I do? What thought can I have that will push me one minuscule thought closer to my good? Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. So this week, I invite us to climb out of those ruts of negative thinking. Climb out of the ruts of limited thinking. And use this law of polarity in your life, knowing that you're moving in consciousness by doing so. Define what is, define what you prefer, recognize that the same in nature, steam and ice. You're not going to do steam and fire, right? So we, they're the same in nature to be on this law of polarity. What is your polar opposite? And begin to work on that. We'll close this morning with a quote from Ernest Holmes, who tells us there's nothing in the universe but action and reaction and the polarity between these two. The action is the spontaneous combustion of an infinite personalness, which we do not comprehend, so we call it God. The reaction is law. And there is not anything else because all relationships and all creation are as, as established by the polarity between the two. So it is. 
so I invite you to join me for an affirmative prayer as we anchor that this morning. How good it is that we come together in community on Sunday mornings and we gather together with like minds and like hearts in the recognition of the oneness of all life recognizing that God is all that there is, that there is not God in anything else. There is only spirit. There's only the one source, the one power, the one presence. There's one life. And it is infinite in its expression. It is infinite in its existence. It is timeless in its existence. It is infinite intelligence and wisdom. It is prosperity and joy. It is love, unconditioned love. And all of that is here now, present in this room. I know it, I claim it, I feel it. And as I know that I am a manifestation and expression of this individualized and unique, I know that each of us are. That each one of us is a individualized manifestation of this infinite source of life, this infinite source of love of this one, and that we are one in that one, that we are one in each other, that we are whole, perfect, and complete in this manifestation of this thing called life. And so from this place of one, I speak my word for and about each of us, knowing, claiming, and simply accepting our good as we uniquely define it. So I invite us this, in this moment, in this prayerful time to... Think of that good that is yours. Bring that into the power of this prayer, the power of this consciousness of this community. Lift it now. Hold it in your heart. Claim it as yours. That is your good. That is your God. I know that as we speak our words of prayer that they are made manifest for the law, as we know, says yes. It simply says yes to our direction. And this day we give it direction. We speak our word. We speak our good. And we claim it. We accept it. Accepting that our consciousness is expanded to receive it in full. I speak a special word of prayer this morning for our beloved practitioner, Daniel, knowing the complete and total health, wellness, and vitality of his body, mind, heart, and soul. As I know that for myself and for all of us here gathered this day, those gathered online now or later, for we are all one, there's no separation. And for this, I am grateful. Grateful for this manifestation, grateful for this prayer, grateful for this community and all who attend, either virtually or in person, you're so blessed. And I release this to the action of law, knowing that it's already done. The word spoken is the word made manifest. I affirm our good this day, and so it is. <laughs> 